morning welcome to this new installment of skincare and book club today i'm going to talk you through the book and Frank your brain while doing my current morning routine so i'm starting with the quantum botanica cleansing balm just because i have this little uh, sample size i i have decided that uh, whenever I have smaller products that I just continue using them until I finish them. So that's definitely something I started doing. Now, uh, this book is definitely a short read or in my case a short listen because I, I went for the audiobook version. My friend who was um, who recently moved from Morocco said that it's something that she read and she enjoyed. Uh, we definitely don't enjoy the same type of books because Overall, the rating for me is a two star, and um, not because the book overall was bad, but if I were to break it down, I think the first part of the book, the first few chapters, were rated one star, if not zero, and the second part of the book, I would rate it three stars. So that's why it averages to roughly two. Now, when it comes to the topic itself, um, the book is meant to be a simplified. Uh, walk through what happens in your brain whenever you're going through anxiety, whenever you're going through stress. Uh, it touches on different topics going from general freak out all the way to grief and depression. So I think in that regard it is a very good catch-all, one of those very nice um, introduction books if you don't want to go into a specific topic uh, in depth. Why I rated it as a 1 or 0 star at the beginning is that, I mean, obviously the title is on Funk Your Brain. I'm not using the actual F word just because I don't want my YouTube channel to be censored. Um, but essentially what she did is that she felt the need to keep cursing throughout the book to make it interesting. And it kind of got to the point where it was ridiculous. Somehow like those sitcoms that in a very forced effort to sound funny would add these laugh tracks every two minutes such that the laugh tracks become too distracting and actually it's not necessarily funny you don't necessarily need it if you are a good writer uh, um, or in a sitcom you don't need to force the, the laugh tracks people will laugh anyway if your content is good and in that case um, it, she had Every single sentence will have something like FN, blah, blah, and cursing and all that. And it felt, it was interesting at the beginning because it was, okay, yes, maybe it's just her way of introducing the topic. But at some point it got old, like 10 minutes into it, it gets old. I don't need to go through four chapters of you doing this because I felt it was very demeaning to the US readership. I have now just rinsed the cleansing balm. Um, so I must say, and I just felt it was offensive because it almost uh, sounded like um, the, the way she speaks in a very, in a very exaggerated effort to sound cool and hip was like uh, it came across as you peasants cannot listen to something um, intellectual or cerebral. So let me just curse every third word so that you finally listen to me because the only way I can get your attention, you nobodies in Arkansas, is if I do it this way. I thought it was extremely offensive to her readership because this is a technique that you can use if you want to grab the attention of people in high school, like if you have a 15 year old and, and they're thinking, oh wow, that person is actually connecting with me. But you know, that is the same level of condescendence you have when you have a politician go and and uh, whenever they're talking to the minorities, they say, oh, think about your abuelita or something like that. Like, there is, you think I'm not at the intellectual level to understand you and you feel that you need to appeal to my um, uh, emotions. And in this case, this author referring to the... Uh, um, almost animalistic and um, and uh, immature part of the of, of, of the brain and I just felt it was a bit uncalled for every now and then it's fine but three or four times in every sentence was just too distracting 
So that's the first thing. And it was almost torture going through the first few chapters. As we went through more chapters, I think she she kind of didn't feel the need to dilute her words that much. But still, you see, friends, um, she keeps telling her, calling herself, ah, oh, the fancy, the fancy doctor lady or something like that. And I'm like, I mean, chill. Uh, just because you have a PhD doesn't mean that you're you're fancy, and and people understand that. So no need to to use that kind of dumbing, dumbing um, language. Now on the content, I think it's it's a good it's a good introduction, almost like um, um, your brain emotions for dummies or something like that. But I think that there are better ways of explaining such things. I have been lucky to to go uh, to attend some virtual trainings on neuroscience. Uh, these were provided by my work as an incentive because I'm, I'm one of the top performers. So, so a, a bunch of us had this as an incentive where we could get a, a, an intro to, to neuroscience and how to use it in, in the context of our job. And obviously not many of us are interested in the topic itself, but if I look at how the trainer in my course introduced these concepts, and how this lady did it, I take that trainer every time over and over again. I like I, I would I would listen to him over and over and over because he didn't dumb it down. He explained it with very simple terms like uh, people, elephants, riders, these kind of things. He didn't feel the need to drop uh, f bombs. He didn't feel the need to curse. He didn't feel the need to call himself the fancy guy with the PhD or something like that and uh, I, I just rubbed me the wrong way I, I would say the whole book rubbed me the wrong way so I what I applied earlier was the Medicaid white balance brightening serum and now I'm going to use the Caudalie Verosource thirst quenching serum because my skin is dehydrated so that was the first part I mean she she explained certain things about the mechanisms of what happens in your brain, the neurons, etc. But she did it in that very irritating way. If you manage to go through the, the first part without getting overly annoyed at her, at her uh, style, the second part becomes much better. I think the second part, could, she could have gotten away with um, the second part style in the whole book and probably appealed to people who have a modicum of self-respect because um, her second part still uh, tries to use a lot of f-bombs and cursing and like and kind of, and you know this kind of thing because in the audiobook I can definitely see what she's trying to do in there but the content was better she explained uh, uh, certain uh, certain um, um, definitions, for example, for depression. She explained how you, uh, what, what happens when you are angry. She, she explained some coping mechanisms, uh, what are the different uh, routes uh, or, or uh, solutions you could have. Uh, she uh, talks about homeopathy, she talks about allopathy, which is the use of traditional medicine, uh, traditional as in conventional. And she talked about a lot of concepts in ways that I, I was thinking, okay, so that is a bit better. But honestly, if it weren't for my personality type where I just don't like to drop things, I would have dropped her by chapter one. I remember being uh, being uh, on on my daily walk and feeling extremely annoyed at her style because I, I I don't think you should talk to people like that. I don't think that you should uh, you should be so condescending to people and think that the only way you can reach them is by dumbing down what you're saying uh, and just cursing. I would only estimate something like 20% of the words in the whole book were cursed, um, in the whole uh, part one words were cursing, and then it drops to something around the 5 to 8% in the second part. Just the fact that I had to mentally keep track of the word density was is, is an issue in itself, right? Uh, so yeah, I think it's a, it's a funny thing to read uh, if you are stuck on a plane. I wouldn't. I think my time is a lot more valuable. I wouldn't want to use that my time on a plane reading that crap. So, 
yeah, I didn't learn anything from it. I wouldn't recommend it, to be completely honest. I have learned a lot more from other books. Uh, so, because I'm very unhappy about this one, I'm just going to go through my list and see what I can recommend. Um, let's see. Detox Your Thoughts uh, by Andrea Bonnier, uh, PhD, is something similar, um, but I think is a lot more hands-on. I think it has a lot more... Uh, uh, um, I would say I would say it is more pragmatic and it focuses a lot less on the uh, gimmicky parts of oh let me make it funny for the peasants. It's more really okay. I understand if you read in this book that there is a need. Uh, here are some examples of certain situations. Here are some scenarios of what happened in your head. Here is how to tackle them. Just a suggestion. There are many other ways. So if you if you want actually something that is less jarring to go through but same kind of aspect I would say detox your thought is a very good one so anyway that's why I did this on a, on a morning uh, skincare routine because I knew it would be short I knew that my takeaway would be I do not recommend this book simply because I think the author used too many gimmicks playing on uh, the stereotype that is the US education is is very bad and I don't agree with that um, I know that some people will probably uh, chuckle at a few f-bombs etc but if you're buying this book if you're paying money for it you are definitely not somebody who needs uh, to have hundreds of f-words scattered in, 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 in a few paragraphs just for you to be able to digest it right and I don't think that anybody should um, go with this, with this premise. Give the people who read your book the respect that they deserve for having spent money buying your work. So yeah, that's that's essentially just a matter of self-respect, I guess. Um, that's how I did my work. And even when I had to, I've been in work situations where I did have to to, to lead different teams with different socioeconomic backgrounds, education backgrounds, um, in the construction sector with people who didn't read, etc. I never had to, to, I was never condescending. There are ways to connect without actually going to the extent of, of making fun of people. So I just applied the Kate Somerville uh, Exfoliate Glow Moisturizing moisturizer uh, so this is a sample that I had as I said in an earlier video I'll try to go over all my samples so this is one that I have been using for a couple of days and I've been very happy with my skincare routine this is now um, I think day four or five of me using this routine that is really gorgeous I like it yeah it's day four I already see that that the texture is starting to change and uh, I, I like that, I like how soft it is. So I'm going to finish with the LMS Pro Collagen Marine Oil. This is an entire wrinkle face oil. I don't need something entire wrinkle, but it is one degree C outside. By the way, my boiler works on and off. Um, it's been a problem since I moved to this apartment. I did tell them, but I'm one of those very easygoing people, except that now with one degree C, it's really not cool. Um, that they still did not change it so yeah in, in in summer I'm going to move from this place because it would have been three years so I've been here for two years and a half end of June I would complete my three years and so I will move to another place so that would be very exciting you guys know me um, I'm a planner so I already started thinking where do I want to go next I'm, uh, I'm like looking around the different areas where I want to live. That's what I do with my daily walks because now my daily walks are mandated by my physio, but I see I make them productive by also checking out the different streets and how I feel about them, etc. Because I want to stay in Belgrade. I love this area. It's mm, super cute. Uh, I really like the aesthetic of it. 
Uh, at the same time, that's also why I was decluttering a little bit. Um, I decluttered my skincare last time that you saw. Uh, these are things that I carried, some of them I carried from Morocco, some of them I carried from Belgium. And I'm thinking, why? This is, like you have a whole box of things that you know you're not going to use. So I just started becoming a little bit more diligent about that. And in six months time, I will probably have a lot less things in here. Just because I am using my samples, I am using my things. And if something is expired, I get rid of it. So I'm just being a lot more... Um, um, intentional in my going through things so this oil is the last bit that I do I will massage it a little bit more and now that I have to start going out and it's very it's very cold I'm thinking of actually adding one more step which is the sunscreen I did not wear sunscreen I do not typically wear sunscreen because I'm always indoors but now because my skin is so like dry, dehydrated and broken, I feel that it would probably be even more prone to sun damage. And uh, so I will actually use my little, God, I just looked at my hand when I did this and I realized how pale I am now. Yeah, I need to go, I need some sun at some point. So you guys know I like this. This is the EV Technology Sunscreen Mousse. Uh, I don't need more than Index 30. I just do it for to protect my, my, my skin. Not that it needs a lot of protection, but simply because, uh, I mean, uh, there is history of uh, skin cancer in my family, so I have to be a bit careful. Mm-hmm. I love this thing because I don't have to worry too much about how I apply it. See, I'm like all over the place because at some point it just disappears in your skin and it's completely transparent. A bit on my ears. Oh my God, the other day I went on a walk and I couldn't feel this part of my ears. So now I'm going to get um, a beanie. I have it in my basket at the entrance. So I'm going to put a beanie over my over my my ears because I was wearing just a ball cap and it hurts so much, especially once I got back indoor. Okay, so I think I covered all my face, so that's good. Mm. When I'm not wearing any makeup, actually, well, it is my makeup in a way. But I just apply a little bit of under eye corrector uh, and I powder a little bit over it so that it doesn't crease. And then I do my eyebrows and then I apply a little bit of uh, Bobbi Brown, uh, uh, Bobbi Brown, what's it called? It's a blush, it's a rouge, yeah? And I, a little bit in here. And that has been my, my makeup for the entire vacation, right? Because I'm, uh, I'm still on vacation and I've been really, really liking it. So. This is the end of the video. I'm all hydrated, all covered. I finished my rant about that PhD lady or fancy lady as she called herself, not respecting her readership. I'm sure there is a group of people who actually thought it was hilarious. But given the topic of the book, I think, no, nah, it wasn't, at least not for me, because I'm a killjoy like that. Uh, so I hope you will check the other book that I recommended. I thought it was uh, much better. Uh, not the best but really really much much better than this one so don't waste your money on this um, the next book I will start reading will be Sapiens and that one I actually have in hard copy uh, I don't have it in audiobook so I will start it uh, probably at night uh, when I'm back to work so by then uh, I'm back to work in a couple of days so I would uh, I would just read it as part of my uh, nighttime routine so it will be a few weeks and I don't expect that much would have changed in my skincare by then. So it will probably be a lot more about the book and a lot less about uh, the skincare part. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. If you have any suggestions on books based on what you know about me and how I have reviewed the past books, I'm conscious I have been pretty negative. but. I remember reading the first chapter of Sapiens and really like it. It's just that I was extremely tired uh, at the time. 
So I'm pretty sure Sapiens is going to be a very, very good book. My sister asked me to read it because she's try she's thinking of buying it too. Um, so I will see. I usually don't give my books. Like uh, if I give you a book, that means you're keeping it because my books are typically highlighted, sometimes annotated and things like that. So I don't, uh, it's very, very rare that I lend a book of mine. Uh, there are some books that I buy in multiples and I just give them away to friends. Um, that's why she's buying her own copy. Because I think there are certain books that if you really enjoy them, you really want to keep your copy. So yeah, that is it. See you soon on my channel. Take care.